Day 55. Now, I'm delighted to say we're joined by Crystal Palace's newly promoted Hayley Nolan. It's um, Kildare Athletes Show today. Hayley, how are you? Good morning to you. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no, we're delighted. Um, you've had a, a really interesting career to get to the point where you're going to be a WSL player next season. So how does that feel at the moment that you're actually looking forward to something as exciting as that? Yeah, no, um, like you touched on, like playing the WSL is an amazing opportunity. I'm really looking forward to it. It's been something that I've been kind of working towards for the last three or four years, playing in the championship. So, yeah, no, I'm really excited. and It's one of the best leagues in the world. So, yeah, I can't wait to get started. Uh, your pathway takes you from Piedmont to the States to yeah. the First Division to the WSL. It's a real story of resilience. Yeah, no, definitely. I don't think my career has been um, straight and narrow, but I don't think anyone else, no, no one's career really is. Um, you know, without the downs, you can't really enjoy the ups. So it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but I wouldn't really change it. Can you take us back to, so where did you grow up? So um, I was born in Baldoyle in Dublin, but um, raised in Johnstown in Kildare for the majority of my life. So that's where um, I started off at Piedmont United, which is only like 15, 20 minutes away from me. Uh, the first girls club that I kind of joined. And then from there, you know, Piedmont's probably one of the best women's teams in, in the country. And I was, you know, had some great coaches there, some great players I've played alongside. And then obviously I went to the States when I was 18. How does that come about? Because I, I think um, this is one of those career paths that, you know, into the future could be very open for a lot of Irish kids who are maybe not quite ready to go straight from uh, an Irish full-time setup to an English full-time setup, particularly as the competition intensifies. But a couple of years in America might be a great staging post for a lot of uh, Irish players. You know, I'm a huge advocate for going to the States. I love my time there. I was there for five years and it kind of gives you a bit of both. Like you get to be a professional athlete, um, you get to train, you get S&C every single day, but then you also get your degree on top of that. It kind of came about because I went away with um, an Irish team to the Dallas Cup. And when I was there, a lot of coaches kind of came up to me and approached me and asked me if I wanted to, you know, to have I ever thought about studying abroad or studying in the US. And at that time, I obviously didn't. I only just knew playing football at Piedmont, playing football in Ireland. And, you know, once they spoke to me, I remember saying to my mom and dad, I was like, oh, that's something I really, really want to do. Because I wanted to get my education, but I also wanted to continue playing football. So it kind of gave me the ability to do both. So you were kind of headhunted of sorts. In a way, like I obviously went away with a good few like of my friends on a, on a kind of team that was kind of made together uh, by um, Dan Byrne in Dublin. And we kind of went there and just coaches kind of came and watched. It was mainly US teams playing. We were probably one of the only like Irish teams that were there. And a lot of coaches were kind of just standing there just like watching and scouting, I suppose, yeah. And they just came up to me. And at the time, obviously, I had no idea what it was. Um, but obviously, spurred an interest. And once um, I spoke to them, it was like, that's what I'm going to do. And when I was 18, I got the opportunity to do that. Why did it end up being Hartford? Um, I've, I went over with my parents to have a look at a couple of colleges and... I met with John Natal, who's the head coach there at Hartford, and the assistant coach was Keir Crinion, who's actually from Rathcool in um, Dublin. So that kind of helped with my decision-making. But no, speaking with both of them, I think the philosophy and the way that the college was run and the way that they wanted their team to be run, it kind of just suited me down to the ground. And obviously, having Kira there, she's also played at Piedmont United, so it was kind of a no-brainer. Did you go over as a midfielder? I did. I went over as a holding mid, yeah. Where I spent, I think, the majority of my college career, I spent playing midfield. I played a couple of times centre-back only when there was injuries or, you know, that kind of sub suspensions, um, which I didn't mind playing. Um, but then when I came over to London and I was at London City, I played my first year as a professional as a midfielder. And I had a sit down with my coach at the time, Mel Phillips, and we kind of just decided that I think centre-back was probably more suited to me and my style of play. Why so? I just think I'm a ball-playing centre-back. Um, that's what I want to do. I think they wanted to get me on the ball as much as possible at London City, and I think that they thought if I played centre-back, I'd get more on the ball, be more involved. Um, I just think it suits my my skill level. It's interesting because quite often the transition happens from the other way around, that a ball-playing centre-back is brought out of defence and, and into midfield, going the other direction. That That's definitely a novel approach from the coaches. Yeah, no, it was, but it's something that I wasn't like uh, opposed to. I think, like I touched on, I played centre back a couple of times um, when I needed to and when the coaches asked me to. And, you know, once I moved into that position at London City, I played my first year as a centre back and I won player of the year. So I'd have to say that Mel was quite correct in her decision. Um, it kind of worked out, you know, for me. And has that been the role with Palace for the last little while? Yeah, so I signed up Palace in the summer um, as a centre back and I played every single game there in that position and, and you know we got promoted so again I think it's worked out so far 
because that leads to a very interesting situation now when you get promoted to the WSL in terms of how a team is going to play. And I, I'd assume uh, if there's a, if anything's going to change, a ball playing centre back, do you need to be more conservative at a higher level? Does anything need to change, or are Crystal Palace going to stick to their guns at the top tier? Oh no, yeah, definitely. I think you have to change your game plan depending on who you're playing against. You can't be naive going into the, the best division in the league, you know, against the Chelsea's Arsenal's. We played Chelsea a couple of months ago and, you know, we did play five at the back. I think we played a 5-4-1. We, we had a really good game against them. I think we only lost 1-0 conceding the 78th minute. So, you know, you have to like pick and choose your moments and when you can play and when you can, you have to be a bit more defensive. And I think Palace know, you know, we know what we're going to be doing in the WSL. And we know when we have to kind of close up shop and when we can kind of play out. Uh, in terms of getting your game now even to a higher level and preparing for yeah. life in the WSL, what what can you do? I think for me, and I, I think I've spoken to a couple of the players, you know, there's a few of us that have been dying to play in the WSL for years and have been really, like, putting a lot of hard work and determination into getting there. And I think over the summer, there's a lot of us that are going to be sticking around in London that we know that we need to improve our game and get better, get stronger, get fitter, because we're going to be playing against the best teams in the world, the best players in the world. And so you have to put the kind of hard graft in off-season to kind of be ready for when the season starts in September, and which is a long time. Yeah, yeah. When you say hard graft, is that, like, so physically strength and conditioning all that kind of stuff but in terms of like tactical and mental preparation how do you how do you get ready for what's coming i think at first i think i definitely have to take a break um the season doesn't start till september so that's about three and a half four months until we get going again which is a long time to be away from a football pitch um for any player but i think for me it's about taking much needed break now but also coming back in and and sitting down and having those hard conversations with my coaches on areas that you need to improve on um things that you can get better at and i think that's what we're going to be doing on the off season because i think for us crystal pass is a huge club we want to do well we don't want to be an up and down club we want to you know, once we get into the WSL, we want to stay there, we want to maintain and we want to improve and, and climb up the ladder. Yeah, you talk to um, people involved in the men's game and there's definitely a, a cliche and probably because it's true that central defenders don't really mature until 27, 28, 29 when yeah. they have a deep understanding of the uh, the game and the ebb and flow of a match and all of the dark arts uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to, to marking. Do you feel that's something that is also going to happen for you as somebody who is quite a late convert in your career to the position? Yeah, I think so. Like I've I spent the last two, two and a half years playing as a centre back in the championship. I think it's been a great learning curve for me. I really enjoyed it. Obviously stepping up to the WSL is gonna be an even bigger step up. But like you touched on, like I'm I am twenty seven. I'm I'm technically coming into my prime, so hopefully that kinda of helps me when I move into the, the higher level. And then in terms of conversations with the Ireland setup and, and being around the fringes of the team uh yeah. for the World Cup, uh, being in the WSL, I guess pushes your case for selection and puts you front and centre week in, week out? Yeah, hopefully so. Like like you touched on, like I've been on a fringe player. I don't think my international career has gone the way that I probably would have liked it to. Um, but at the end of the day, all I can control is, is how I'm playing at my club. And if I'm doing well, hopefully that guarantees or helps me get selected and hopefully playing in the top division. Um, and I get a knock on the door and hopefully I can get back into the squad. That's all I can do. And would you seek out uh, opinions from... The people involved at, at management of the squad from Eileen Gleeson or Emma Byrne or anybody who's who's working on the squad at the moment and go, well, what do I need to do to make sure that I'm not just in your thoughts for the extended squad, but for the, the match day and for the team? Yeah, no, definitely. I think I have great communication, open communication with Eileen Gleeson. And, you know, it's good to have feedback in areas that you can improve on because at the end of the day, we're all footballers and you can always improve. Um, I think that I do have those conversations with Eileen and that's something that I can work on over the summer and push on and, and if I do well in the WSL, then hopefully that opens that door for me. I'm sure you're having conversations with the likes of Izzy and Abby as well in the, the Palace setup about what their experiences have been and uh, under Eileen Gleeson over the last few months. Yeah, no, I think the girls have, have absolutely loved it. I know that they came in in January. Um, they're great, you know, they're they're a bundle of energy, but they're fantastic footballers, um, really talented footballers. And I think they really helped us push it on and push it over the line in the last couple of months. And I think all three of us are relishing the chance to, obviously, Izzy to get back into the WSL, but for myself and Abby to kind of get our opportunity. And I think the three of us are really looking forward to it. What have the celebrations been like? 
as you can hear in my voice, I think they've been they've been a bit um, hard over the, over the weekend. I haven't got my <laughs> voice back yet, but I think it was well worth it. Um, there was, like I said, there's been a lot of hard work over the last year um, to get to where we are, and I think all of us deserve to kind of enjoy that moment because you know they don't come around too often. Was that partying all weekend? Was that was is it literally as the, an open shot case just like that? Uh, it was a little bit, but well after the game on the Sunday, it wasn't really the weekend, but it was a sure. Sunday Sunday night thing, yeah. Very good. These are like unbelievably special moments as well. Like, I mean, uh, I'm sure at the start of the season, this was very much the objective. Does it kind of add to the joy a little bit that you could almost visualize this at the start of the season, that this was very much your target and there's just that added satisfaction that you've just achieved those goals as opposed to being a completely out of the blue? If I'm being completely honest with you, like for myself, um, I was at London City the last couple of years and every year we spoke about winning the league and it was something that we really like pushed and spoke about every day. I came to Palace and no word of a lie, we didn't really like speak about that at the beginning right. of the year. It was only in the last five games, before the last five games, our, our coaches kind of came into the room and obviously at that time we were sitting, I think second or third, but I think we had a game in hand and we, it would have put us top basically if we'd won that. And, going into those last five games, like they kind of addressed the elephant in the room because no one really spoke about it. No one really said, oh, we're here to win the league. Obviously, there was whispers between each other, between staff members, but before those five, five games, I remember Laura coming in and kind of addressing it. And like we got four four wins from five and, and the last one was a draw. So I think she needed to address it. You know, it puts pressure on us, but pressure is a privilege. And I think we all relished that. And thank God we did because I've been chasing this dream of winning the championship for a couple of years now so um, I'm delighted to say that you know we've won it this year. What's Selhurst like to play in? Unbelievable. Great stadium. Um, the fans on Sunday were unbelievable. Uh, we had about I think it was about 7,000 at the stadium you know but it's nice it's a real home field club which I love a uh, big community-based club and you can sell, you can kind of sense that from the fans they're they're diehard Crystal Palace fans and you know it's it's great to be able to play there. It does feel that like Palace has been a club that's uh, given a good bit of support to, to the women's team down through the years. Obviously, it's needed to go up to a, a different level over the last number yeah. of years. But even like 10 years ago, I remember Bill Nye coming out in support of the women's team as like an honorary president of the football club in general and uh, showing his face and putting his reputation be, be behind the team and his his face and all that. So it does seem like it's been, it's been it has treated the women's team relatively well compared to some of the other yeah. big Premier League teams. Here, look, I've only been here for the year, for the last year and it's been mm. absolutely amazing and I've loved it. Everyone's been great. But I know that there's been players and there's been staff members that have been here for the last four, five, six years that have put in so much work and I know there's so many staff members that have left now but they kind of put the foundations down for us to do what we're doing this year. It's not just about the team and the staff and this year, like absolutely we've put that work in but there's been so much work going into the scenes behind like for the last couple of years and I think all of us have to be really grateful to all of those people as well to kind of help us, uh, who helped us get here to the WSL. Uh, who are you looking forward to coming up against most in the WSL next season? Which of the world-class strikers that are uh, going to be uh, playing on your shoulder well, and running past you? <laughs> We played Chelsea a couple of months ago, um, and at the time it was Ramirez playing up tops. Uh, Sam Kerr is obviously injured, but I think for myself, like I'm, I'm excited to play Sam Kerr. I think when we go and play Chelsea, so that would be a fun experience for sure. Uh, and have you any plans for the summer? It's uh, as you say, it's a long month off. Is it travel? Is it um, lying on a beach and getting rest and recuperation in? Um, I, I have a couple of holidays booked just to have some. Um, your know, time off and to relax and just to enjoy the off season um, in the month of May and then hopefully after that I feel a bit refreshed to get going again and get after this WSL season that's coming up. Uh, one last thing, you did play for Kildare at uh, minor level, was it? So you're I, dual yeah, sports. Yeah, big Kildare girl. Um, my family, were, we all played ga, uh, growing up and I actually loved Gaelic football so much. I was really sad when I had to give it up. But when I went to the States, you know, obviously I had to make that decision, especially when I was going on with the international football. But yeah, no, I played for Kildare at minor level and I absolutely loved it, yeah. Did you find it benefited you in terms of the physical exchanges or was it actually just totally separate? No, I think it. I think it helps hugely. I've always said that. I remember growing up and people were saying, "Oh, you have to. You have to pick one. You have to pick one. You can't keep doing it." And I remember, obviously, I was at eighteen, seventeen. I was with the minor team, and I was obviously playing for Ireland on their nineteen level. People were saying, "You can't push yourself too much." And you know, maybe they were right. Maybe they weren't right. But you know, at the end of the day, I think it helped my fitness levels. I think Gaelic football is insane for that. 
Um, and like, I think it, it helped me tremendously. And, you know, I loved playing it. And I wish I could play both now, but you can't, so. Hayley, we let you rest your voice. Uh, Well-deserved. Congratulations on a great season. Thanks a million for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's uh, Hayley Nolan there celebrating um, a title win with Crystal Palace and a WSL player as of next season.